Good morning. It's Pastor Rao. It's good to be with you guys again to get right into God's word. And it is my intention today to share some things with you that are going to help you in your life. Yeah, you know, I've been studying this week on some very powerful scriptures, and I just want to share what I've received this week with you. And I pray in advance that you have a great week, you know, and after you hear the information I'm sharing with you, that you give it some thought and make some adjustments in your life. I mean, everything is about making changes, making adjustments in your life and, you know, give yourself a break a little bit, you know, but get into prayer, read the word. Don't get so dogmatic with everything. But today we're going to be talking about something dear to my heart and it's about your tongue. It's about what we use our tongue for and the words that we form with our tongue. And a lot of that is a metaphor for how we think. And so it all connects uh, as far as a message that you have to share with somebody. And, you know, in these days, our word is still our bond. Back in the old days, my dad and his dad, you know, they just gave a word. There were no contracts. You know, if somebody said something, they did what they said. Those were the days my, my dad would call the days of men. Well, today we have to have contracts. We got lawyers. We got all these things that happen and people still don't abide by the things they say. And so I want to get into the word today and center some things around the tongue and what you speak and how important it is uh, when you say something, you're speaking something into existence. It is a life forming thing that you're bringing to pass. And so watch what you say and better yet, watch how you think because you only can speak based on how you think and see. And so that's important. So um, I've got some questions for you as I always do. And uh, the area of scripture we're going to be talking about today is James, James chapter three, one through 12. And the subject is the tongue is a fire. And that doesn't already give you a good idea that that's something good. If it's a fire, when we relate things to fire, we always think of something getting out of control. And that's kind of what this is talking about. The tongue when it's not properly managed, can cause things to get out of control. Wars form by words, you know, people get divorced because of words. People, you know, all kinds of things can escalate because of words. So you want to go through the roller deck of your mind and make sure when you speak something that that's what you want them to hear. Because sometimes your intention and how you say something doesn't come out the way that they hear it. So make sure that you get control of your tongue. And the only way that I know we can get control of our tongue is the things we're going to talk about today. So let me give you these questions and then you can begin to think about this and take some notes today, write some things down. And this week, I want you to commit to managing your words, managing your thoughts and managing your tongue for a better outcome. All right. Here's some of the questions that I have for you today. All right. Number one. Do you understand that the things you say are not just merely words? I mean, the things you say, if you think about it, I mean, I've said some things I wish I could unsay, but you can't unsay, nor can you unhear what people have told you. So I want you to understand the power in what you say. Do you understand that the things that you say are not just words? Very important thing to think about, especially in relationships. If you're talking to your wife, be careful what you say to your wife. If you're talking to your husband, be very careful how you talk to your husband because when they hear you, they might be perceiving something totally different than what you're trying to convey. And especially be careful with what you say to your children. I mean, it could damage your children or you could edify them and build them up. It's really how you say things. Number two, do you know that your words direct your intentions? Your words direct your intentions. Like, what is it that you are intending? What did you hope to get out of what you're saying to someone? You know, if you notice when you go to a court of law and they make you swear, you know, to speak the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, this tells you how important words are, that your testimony and the words you speak are going to be the things that are recorded. And so you have to be very careful. Make sure that what you're saying is what you want to say because people hear you again so it directs your intentions people know what you intend to do by the words you speak number three do you understand that the tongue is the power the tongue has power do you understand that the tongue has power in it over in proverbs eighteen twenty one, he says death and life are in the power of the tongue 
and they that love it shall eat its fruit thereof. And so when we speak about life, we speak about death, we speak about positive things or negative things, we can get on a slippery slope because a lot of people, they get this thing where they think positive thinking is the way to go. And I'm a positive thinker myself. I believe in positively thinking positive. But if you only think positive, it only helps you smile while the ship is sinking. So you want to do more than just think positive. You want to have actions that go along with your thinking positive. And so when you speak, it's power in that. So make sure that you understand that. You know, do you understand the power of your tongue? Do you understand that? So uh, watch how you deliver your words to people. And sometimes people depend on your word as much as they do a document or God's word or somebody that's an authority because, you know, your intentions and who you are as a person is wrapped up in what you say. And so when people say, oh, you're a man of your word, you're a woman of your word, people bank on that. So you want to be careful. Your words present a lot of power. Number four, do we know that a small word spoken uh, from your tongue causes massive destruction. Just a little word spoken from your mouth, from your tongue can cause massive destruction. Have you ever been in a relationship or been somewhere where something was pretty placid? It was pretty peaceful. Then you said something or they said something and it raised the level, the intention of what was being said and massive things. People blow it out of proportion. They end up breaking up in relationships. People lose businesses behind it. You know, they lose contracts behind it. All kinds of things can happen. So you want to make sure that you understand that a small thing said may not be a small thing when it comes to the impact that it gives you. And so this is what James is addressing about how powerful the tongue is. And so I just really want to bring it to our attention to watch what you say and how you say it. And more than that, watch what you're thinking about because the energy and the force behind what you say comes from the thought life. So as you're thinking things, you're going to convey it through words. That's the only way that a conversation is going to end up a good conversation or a bad conversation. All right. Number five, why does your tongue get in, get you into big trouble? Why does your tongue get you into big trouble? It's kind of what I've been saying. Our tongue gets us into big trouble, not because we're speaking it, but it's what we mean behind what we say. It's the thought. It's the intention behind it. I'm speaking a lot about intentions because what you intend, if you really intend something, make sure that that's what it is that you intend. You know, you always hear people say, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, that wasn't my intention. Well, if it wasn't your intention, then you have to give more thought to what you're saying. See, because things can just go awry and feelings get hurt. People get emotional. You know, uh, things get said. You know, sometimes we overpromise and then we under deliver. And so you want to make sure that you don't say anything that you're not going to bring to pass. Better to be quiet and not say anything than to talk a lot and do nothing about what you said and cause people to distrust you. So it's important for, that we know that. And six, why do we bless and curse with the same breath? In one minute, we can give praise and honor to somebody and uplifting. And the next moment, we could be cursing negative and speaking ill of someone. And it comes from the same place. And James uses this analogy that bitter and sweet should not come from the same fountain. In other words, if I'm drinking fresh water, I don't want to taste bitter water. If it's fresh, you know, I want to drink fresh water. And so you want to make sure when you're speaking to people that you're speaking what it is that you mean. Don't be, you know, uplifting one minute and then be bitter and negative the next minute. The only way you're going to form good relationships is that people have to understand what it is that you're trying to communicate with them. And so I don't believe in a bittersweet relationship. I know people can do that, but I believe if I'm going to be sweet to somebody, I'm going to be sweet. If I'm going to be bitter, then you're going to know that I'm bitter, but there's not going to be any confusion. So James addresses the fact that if we're going to speak, we should not use the same breath to say negative things and positive things at the same time. So that's important. Over in Matthew 12, uh, Matthew 12, 33 through 37, I'm not going to read it, but if you would go this week and read that Matthew 12, 33 through 37, and it has some very interesting things to say about your character and about how powerful words are. And it talks about in, let me paraphrase it, that whatever you speak, you will be justified or condemned by it. So read it for yourself this week and let that be a thought that you would give to 
anything that you get ready to say to somebody that these words reveal my character. People are going to judge me based on what I said. So if they're going to judge me based on what I said, I want to make sure that I'm speaking from the best character trait that I have and that I am so that I know that every word I say, every word that's recorded, I shall have to give an account for it. And that's what Jesus was talking about. All right. So let's get right over here into James. As a mouthful there to share with you, but I'm going to read down through this and just make a few points. And my prayer again is that you get a guard over your thought life and that you mount a guard over your tongue and that your tongue doesn't get you into a lot of trouble because the tongue can boast big things. In James chapter three, verse one, it says this, let not many of us become teachers. He says, my brethren, knowing that as such, we shall incur a stricter judgment. That is so plain and clear. I don't need to do a whole lot of commentary on that one. But in essence, if you want to be a leader, if you want to be a teacher, you're going to be judged by a higher standard. You are responsible for more. So don't run after just being a leader or being in charge. Just know that what comes with that is a stricter judgment. Now, in verse two, he says, we all stumble in many ways. And man, I've I done that. But I stumble in so many different ways. This is so true to me. It spoke to my spirit. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man able to bridle the whole body as well. So this gives us the understanding that when we speak, it bridles the whole body. And if you could speak correctly and speak perfectly to a situation, you can control the outcome of everything. So that's how important that is. In verse three, now if we put the bits into the horse's mouth, and you know what a bit is, is how you control a horse, a big giant animal, you put this little bar with the little uh, leather straps on it, and that horse is, uh, controlled by how you rear back on that bit or you pull it to the left or to the right. You can make the horse go, you can make the horse stop. So he's using this analogy about our tongues. He says that if we put bits in the horse's mouth so that they may obey us, we direct the entire body as well. So again, look at verse four. Behold, the ship also, though they are so great and driven by so strong winds, are still directed by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. So this massive ship, this massive horse, the horse is being directed by the bit, and this massive ship that's driven by fierce wind is actually given direction from a little rudder. So you can turn that rudder one way or the other, it's gonna give the direction of the ship. He's relating to how powerful your tongue is, a very small part of your body that directs great things and gives you great navigation, whether it's good navigation or bad navigation, the tongue is very important and connected to what you think in your mind. It's very important that you join together and make sure that the things you're thinking are the things that you're saying, that they are the things that you want people to hear and know. That's so important. Again, you can't unsay something and they can't unhear it. So you want to make sure. All right. Now he goes on to say here in verse uh, five, so also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. Behold how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. That makes so much sense. You have these vast tundras of trees and forests around the world, like in Alaska, places like that. And a little ember, a little small ember can set that whole thing afire. How important are your words and the tongue being a small member how you can great you can cause great destruction if you're speaking irreverently or wrongly or misintending the message that you have by speaking without management. You want to make sure that what I say to you, that I mean it, and I mean it for your edification, and I mean it for your betterment, and I mean it for all people that are involved, that are included in the conversation to uplift everybody. Nothing is worse than having a great peaceful meeting. And one person comes to the door and says one wrong word and sets the whole meeting ablaze and arguments and conflict and disinformation and all of that comes about because of that. You have to give thought to the things that you're about to say out of your mouth. It's so important. He goes on to saying in verse six, the tongue is a fire. It's a fire, a very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life, and is set on fire by hell. So he's speaking of the damage that the tongue can do here. Obviously, 
The tongue is taking the rap here, but it's really the thought life. What you think in your mind translates through your mouth and your tongue is actually what's being able to speak or to convey the things that are inside of you. So as Christians, as people today, as mothers, fathers, and people in business, you really want to get a management over your tongue. You want to get put a guard over your mouth. So important. Verse 7 says, For every species of beasts and birds and of reptiles and creatures of the sea, the Bible says is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. That's a pretty big resume that we've tamed Shamu. We've tamed elephants and lions and tigers and all those things. But it says this in verse 8, But no one can tame the tongue. It is a relentless evil and full of deadly poison. Think about that. It's a relentless evil full of deadly poison. Look at verse 9. With it we bless. This is what I was talking about. The blessing and the cursing. The bitter to sweet. With it the tongue. We bless our Lord and Father. And with it we curse men. We bless our Lord and Father. And then we curse men. This is what we do with our tongue. Who have been made in the likeness of God. Now look at verse 10. From the same mouth both blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not to be this way and then he gives this analogy that brings it home for me as i thought about this in verse 11 does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water of course that's a question that he's asking and of course it's rhetorical uh, a fountain does not do that and that's what he's alluding to that we shouldn't do that either and 12 can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Neither can salt water produce fresh water. And see, so he's given us the understanding that we have to kind of choose the lane we're going to walk in. We got to choose the thought life that we're going to have. Therefore, we can choose the words that we're going to speak. And I've learned this in my days, that if I stay in my lane, my lane is less crowded. If I get over into your lane and your business, there's all kinds of things going on that I can't control. I can only control the tongue that I have. I can't control the tongue that you have. I can control what my intentions are, what I'm saying, and I can mount a governor over my tongue by reading the scripture, by praying, and by carefully thinking and being very, very, very intentional with what I'm going to say with my mouth. And so I think this is a message for us today that our relationships will benefit from it. Our marriages will benefit from it. Our business relationships will benefit from it. And the world will be a better place if we speak what we mean and mean what we speak. And that's what I have for you today in Jesus name.